Welcome back to Fast Freddy RC, and today we're going to do part two of the build process of the Tamiya 114th scale fuel tank trailer. Now, I'm not gonna bore you with any preamble with this one. I think we should just go right into the build. If you want to see that some of the tips and tricks that I had, please go back and watch part one. With this video, we really just wanna do the build, let you see exactly how this goes together and how I did it. And I have tips and tricks through that as well. Um, but I just want you to be able to really see what I'm doing. Uh, so we'll get started on that. So let's just cut right to step one. So for this bit here, um, I put in all of the screws first for this step. And then what I'm doing is I'm going from the back of the trailer and working my way forward, just removing each screw and then putting the liquid thread lock on. Normally I don't like using the thread lock, but this one being metal on metal, um, I think it's just gonna rattle loose, so I'm, I'm happy to do it. But I wanted to make sure that the fit was correct first. So I'm going through this um, just by putting all the screws in, making sure that they're fitting well um, and that the metal pieces are fitting together properly, and then taking each screw out, working from back to front, and then putting the thread lock on so that I know that it's going in correctly. Okay, so that is step two. So that is completed. As you can see, step three, is going to be the legs. I'm going to leave this step because I have the motorized support legs um, which I'm going to be attaching to this trailer. So um, we'll just skip to step four. Okay, so moving back to the manual for the trailer itself, this was step five. All of that got replaced by the motorized support legs, so we can skip step five now and move right on to step six, which is now working on the tank stays, which you can see here. So I'm going to pull the pieces all together and install that. Okay, so here we have the screws, the BB2 ta tapping screws, along with the um, <clears throat> tank stays. And so now we're just going to install them onto the frame. So now we're moving on to the second part of step six. Uh, and this is really cool because we're back to the aluminum pieces. And, you know, these look just awesome. Uh, super shiny. So it's just a matter of now sliding them through. And I mean, that, that just looks so sharp. And I've got to get some of the other pieces on. Uh, but I mean, that looks, that looks so cool. This is looking really, really good. There is the finished uh, product for step six. So now we're on to step seven, the tail lights. So as we can see, uh, I need the bumper uh, I need the uh, colored lenses, I need the bumper stay with the mud flaps, etc. so that we can then have the completed bumper to attach to the rear of the trailer. I've already got all of the parts. That looks just awesome, that chrome piece. Uh, the mud flaps, your colored lenses, and all of the screws needed. So I'm going to go ahead and put that together. And there is the completed step seven. <laughs> I love that. That looks so awesome um, the only thing I'm not going to do is it shows you here them you installing it to the trailer now I intend on putting a light kit on this um, which 
I want to do soon. Uh, but I'm just going to leave that off for now and move to the next step because I haven't tied these. I haven't actually um, put these on very tight right now because there's no point because I know I want to put the lights in there. So I'm just going to leave that for now and move on to the next step. So here we go. Step eight. It's the fenders which we're going to attach to the chassis. So I've already got the parts that I'm going to need for this. Um, and I've also got to take these off the tree. Now you'll notice that these are chrome plated and that's great. And I've done my very best to try and make sure, see the, where it attaches to the tree. Um, I've already cleaned them up a bit so that they're flat. I, I don't want any burbs on that. But obviously you've scratched off the um, the original chrome plating, um, which I'm not a fan of. I mean, it's not going to be visible because it's on the back side of it. Um, so they've made sure that it's not a part you can see. However, if you, you know, I'll see what, what it looks like when it's on the uh, trailer. But you can see they're telling you um, that, you know, you're going to lose the plating. So get some X11 paint to touch it up. I might do that, just depends on how badly this shows in the final product. Um, and even then, I might buy some and just, you know, touch it up when it's on the trailer. I'm not too worried about it right now. But that's just something to be aware of, that you are going to end up scratching off the, the chrome plating. And, you know, try and do as good a job as you can without scratching most of it off. Um, so I'll go ahead and start building this and putting it together. So here we are at... Uh, step nine, the leaf springs. You have to make two of them, obviously for both sides. Um, we're going to install them on the trailer. And I've got all of the parts and screws that I need for this step all ready to go. So there is the instructions in terms of how to put the leaf spring together. And there is a finished leaf spring. This is actually quite fun to put together. Um, I've always actually enjoyed putting together the leaf springs. So that is the finished one. And then as you can see, um, there's another screw uh, to actually screw that right into the suspension plate. And I've already put on one side. So that's what it looks like uh, once it's installed onto the chassis. So I'll go ahead and put on the other one. So there we have the completed leaf springs attached to the chassis. Okay, so here we are, step 10. This is the wheel axle. Um, you can see that uh, we've got, we're gonna put the axle together on both sides um, and then attach them to the chassis. Now I've laid out all of the parts that I need for this step right here um, and there's your axles themselves but there's one change and I've said this with all of my kits these here are the bushings that come with the kit but they are getting replaced with ball bearings so I get these from Fast Eddie um, I still think they're uh, one of the best place to pick up uh, bearings. Uh, so I'm using Fast Eddie bearings on these. So that's the only immediate hop up that I'm doing to the trailer. Uh, because I honestly believe that if you're going to um, have this a while, you might as well replace these axles with ball bearings. Because if you look at what has to be done uh, in the build process, I'd rather not take this apart just to put bearings in. So I'd rather start with bearings. So that's the goal here. So I'm just gonna put this together. So there is the finished axle, one of them. Um, and you can see here, it shows the bearings and how to put it together. Well, here's one open, um, but it is complete. Now the only difference is um, you can see here it shows uh, putting the grease on, but that's because of the bushings. Because I'm putting ball bearings in, I don't need to do that. So I'll close this up now and uh, we'll move to installing it on the chassis. So there it is on the chassis. So that's uh, nicely installed. So step 11 is the radius arm. 
and you can see uh, the four pieces right here that have to be installed onto the axles um, here. Now you're going to notice that it shows putting liquid thread lock um, on those screws. Now I got to tell you, I'm not a fan of doing that and I'm not going to do that on this model. Um, at least not at this point. I prefer to have the trailer fully built so that if I, you know, if I've made a mistake, I still have the option of removing it. It's kind of like this battery compartment. As you've seen earlier, I've had to move it twice and it was an error on my part, but to my mind, that still proves that it's better not to put it on until you're absolutely certain that you're, you know, the model's finished. So I'm not going to be putting this thread lock on um, that they keep pointing to here um, and until the model is completely finished. So I'll go ahead and start uh, putting this together. Okay, so there's the radius arms that needed to be installed and there we have them on the trailer. So that step is finished and we can move on. Now step 12, as you can see, is the retractable legs. Now those are the legs that come with the kit and as we already know I've already installed the motorized support legs. So we're going to move on to the next step which is the damper units. So I'll start the build of those. So I've pulled together all of the parts that are going to be needed for this step uh, along with the screws and springs etc. So I'm going to go ahead and start putting the shocks together. So I'm just greasing up the uh, screw for the shock. Um, but here's what I would recommend if you're building these, and I mean, this is gonna be great for every kit that uh, you might be working on, but I strongly suggest that when you're building shocks, you get yourself a pair of shock pliers. Um, because in order to get this cap onto the end, you have to be able to grab the cylinder here. Um, and if you don't do it right, you're going to scrape it, scratch it, and then you're going to have a, um, you know, since that's got to go through that hole nice and smooth, you're going to wreck the shocks, essentially. So I have these ones, uh, Dynamite. And these ones are actually made by Horizon Hobbies. That's the part number. So they're shock shaft pliers. So it's a multi-tool. So with this, you can see here, this is where you put in the shock tower so that you can get a nice grip on it. So if, you, if I take the one that we're working on right here, I'm gonna put that, I'll do it this way, put that right there, grab it, and now that is a solid grip and it's not going to ruin the shocks because it's specifically designed for this so i can put as much pressure on that but i'm not ruining the cylinder so that's awesome and then obviously you're going to take your end piece put it on there and you can start screwing it in And I've got a nice grip on the cylinder, so I can just keep spinning. Now it's gonna to get tougher and tougher, and what I find, once it gets to a certain point, it's easier to grab, even with a needle nose pliers, just don't use the ends, because of the, you know, obviously that's serrated, so that's gonna wreck the plastic. But if you actually just grab the end and spin, you'll find you're not going to wreck anything and you'll you'll be able to finish it. Um, it's kind of awkward with the camera, so I'm just going to move that and actually continue it. But that gives it a nice grip and you're not going to ruin your shock. So I would highly recommend getting yourself a pair of shock pliers uh, when building any shocks for any of your kits. So there we have our completed <clears throat> four shocks and now I will move into installing them on the chassis.
Okay, so there is step 13, the suspension um, and the shock installation. So that is now complete. So now we're gonna move on to step 14, which is the wheels and the tires. So it's the entire installation. So I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, put that together. Okay, so here we are, step 14. These are the screws and the nuts needed to put the wheels together. And these are the two pieces that you're gonna need. And these are the tires. Now this one is a finished, uh, or yeah, complete a set of tire, completed set of tires that are just finished. And I've also painted the Tamiya uh, with white um, acrylic paint because I find that just looks so much better when it's rolling down the road. So I'm just going to finish up the last uh, wheel because I've actually installed the others on the trailer themselves. So I've got them on both on both sides. And so now I'll just finish this off and we'll have the wheels complete. So there we go. Step 14, installing the wheels. And there we have it on the trailer. Moving on from step 14, step 15 is the tank. So there we have it. We are now going to be installing the tank on the rest of the trailer. Now the first part, uh, if you look here, you need to grab these parts here from D2, which are actually going to sit on the very top of the trailer. Now it does say to paint the ends uh, with the semi-gloss black X18. Um, I've actually gone ahead and chosen to use X1 uh, only because I have this. I don't see the point in getting the other for just these small parts. So I'm doing it uh, in just black, the X1. And I've already gone ahead and done it. So you can see there's three that I've already completed. And here's just a close up of one of the others that I've done as well. Um, so that's finished. So those parts are complete. So now I'm going to attach those to the rail, which is right here. And then we're going to attach the entire tank. Now I've actually put the tank on the trailer itself. Uh, that just looks so, so awesome. Um, obviously the plastic uh, covering is still on the trailer. So I will uh, move that and I'll finish the build. So this is gonna look very cool because now we're, we're really moving to a completed uh, looking trailer. So this is gonna look really cool. So you can see here, they've got some end, end caps and they're not saying that you have to do much with them. You just have to put them inside the little hole and pop it into place and that's it. So that is, that's the piece. So I guess you can keep that, uh, it doesn't have to be glued in or anything. And then you can see there that the underside, the bigger hole is gonna go into the bigger hole of the frame and it's just gonna sit in there like that. And you can see that the black hose part is going to go into the metal as though it's on the underside. So if we were to pick this up and take a look at it from the side, it just looks like the blacks inside, are, you know, going right into the truck. So that's got to be screwed down. Um, and then there's, you know, the three others that are gonna go along the top. So I'm gonna go ahead and put those ones on here and then we'll screw it into the top of the tank, which again, I gotta remove the, the blue plastic uh, protective cover. So I'll go ahead and do that. Oh, the plastic's coming off. Oh, that looks so awesome. So now we are on step 16, and you can see that we're going to be installing the end caps. And of course, because we are putting the lights on, you can see we've done the installation. The cable is through. 
Uh, wires are all down and the rear bumper is now attached. So we can now uh, put on the front and rear end caps. And you can see there's an, this piece here, E6, we're going to need. And we're going to need piece E9. Both are chrome pieces. There they are. We've got one and two. So those now have to be installed as well as putting on the end caps. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. And remember, this is also the step where we would have put in the uh, semi-trailer lights if you have them. So now we're going to attach this chrome piece right here to this metal plate. And it's just right there. And get the screws on there. And I've got to put two on there and it just looks like the hose is coming out of the, the bumper, which is cool. So that's going to look really sharp when that part's on. Okay, so we're going to get this um, attached now. I've cleared off the film that was on there. I've got to push that on, which it is now. So that provides a nice, you can see that's a really nice firm fit. Um, we don't know how much length of the cable we're, we're actually going to need at this point, but now I can feed this cable back into the, um, into the rest of the fuel tank trailer, and then I can attach this onto the trailer now. So I'll just go ahead and do that. So there is the finished end cap. It's all in place. And you can see because we're using the uh, Tamiya uh, semi-trailer light kit, we've got a, this wire and this rubber boot. And in actual fact, what it is, is it replaces what you see here because they're telling you to grab E4, which is what you're going to put on there. There's another piece here that you're going to attach. But none of that is needed if you're putting on the, the semi-trailer light set because it's got its own cable and... and uh, rubber boot that it comes with for attachment and that just pops into place there's no you're not screwing it in it's just it's you just push it in and it's in so we're going to now move on to uh step 17 which is now installing the ladder and all of the other sort of finishing touches to the back end uh, and then it'll be moving on to 18 which is the stickers so for step 17, these are the pieces that you need, uh, including the ladder. Um, there's even that, this bar right here uh, is actually, it's aluminum. I mean, that is that is so awesome. So that piece is aluminum. And I've laid out all the pieces right here. So these are all the pieces that you're gonna need for step 17. And I'm gonna go ahead and start building this part. Uh, so we can finish this off. So first, I think we're going to grab this piece here uh, and attach the metal bracket that's going to be used for the ladder. And you're just going to need those little screws and the nuts. If I can get that on. That's one in, and now we're going to put in the other one. Great. 
So there we have that piece attached and the metal bracket for the ladder. So next part is putting on this hose. Um, it looks like we need that end needs to be on that end and we're just gonna screw it down and these ones don't need the nuts so we'll just put that in oops Just gonna tighten it up enough that I can still move it and then I'll put in the other screw. Now, because they're both in, I'll screw it down now. There we go. So as I'm now about to put on these pieces, uh, the ladder and everything onto the tanker, uh, let's get a little bit of satisfaction here and pull off this protective plastic and get it down to the chrome. Oh yeah. Excellent. So for me, this is the coolest part because the back end of the tanker looks great anyway but this is going to be so cool with just the finishing touches so here's the aluminum bar for the hose um, or pipe i should say that's just going to fit there this is the ladder now i've already put the plastic in the metal pieces at the top and then at the bottom you can see the the bottom rung of the ladder's notch that's how you know that that goes at the bottom and so this is going to fit into the holes but at the same time, you're gonna make sure that it's fitting into the top of the pipe as well. So I'm just gonna push that down, make sure that's going on it, fit that on as well. And there you have it. So it's in and we're gonna attach uh, the top part with just those two little um, screw guys, uh, the tiny ones. And then once that's done, these are going to be pushed into place. These are metal as well, and they are the ladder rungs for the top. And they just get pushed into place. So there's two of those. So I'll do that after I finish this, but I've got to get this all screwed in. But I mean, that looks so sharp. So there we have the finished back end with the ladder and the piping. And you can see the steps at the top and they're raked uh, for uh, easy access to the ladder, I suppose, and getting up and down. Uh, and then I just think this looks so sharp. So that is the back end of the fuel tank trailer. So now we're going to move on to step 18, which is putting on all of the stickers. So as step 18 is the final set of instructions uh, for this trailer, I just decided I wouldn't do any 
cutting and sticking on parts because the stickers themselves were relatively easy to put on this trailer. The only one that might have caused a bit of issue is the large one that said Gallant Eagle, but as I've said in another video, I don't want to put that on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to post a few videos at the end of this just showing the, the stickers in place. I do think this trailer has been an absolute joy to build and I seriously hope that this has been very helpful for you and hopefully for your trailer build you got some something good out of it uh, and if you did please like the video let me know that uh, this has been helpful and subscribe uh, because there'll certainly be more content coming and if you have any questions please feel free to reach out I'm happy to help with any build you have so until next time we'll see you in another video